Hey everybody, this is Sean from Brad Agritech. Uh, today we are going to show you our new seedling cart system uh, that's a little bit larger and it can also be uh, used for microgreen production. Um, so today we're going to go through and show you all of the components that come with the kit. Uh, this is our base package here. Um, and then uh, we're also going to show you how to uh, put together the, the basic components and get it all up and running. If you've followed Brad Agritech for long, you know that we're constantly working on new ways to make running a modern farm simpler, more efficient, and more profitable. One of the things we've been working on lately is our new seedling cart system. We're a big fan of seedling carts because they are space efficient, you can control the seedling environment separate of the main farm, and they allow you to grow hundreds, even thousands of seedlings at once. Today, we're upgrading our current seedling cart, a handy DIY version that grows 1,600 to 3,200 seedlings, to a larger and sturdier version with two to three times the capacity. So first up, here's a list of the components and parts that you should receive with your seedling cart. Now that you've gone through all the parts, here's a list of the tools that you'll need to assemble the seedling cart system. So when ordering the seedling cart system from Brad Agritech, you'll actually order the rack separate from the seedling cart kit. You can find a link to our recommended supplier on our online store when ordering the seedling cart kit. Please refer to the instructions that are included with the rack for the assembly process. As you begin assembling the rack, ensure that the bottom shelf is high enough to allow room for the reservoir to sit underneath. This will be approximately 18 inches. Next, start spacing the additional shelves above the bottom shelf. Use a distance of approximately 10 and a half inches between the top of the lower shelf to the bottom of the upper shelf support bar. This should give you approximately six inches between your seedling trays and the lights. Now that you've got the rack assembled, the next step will be to hang the lights. Begin by removing the light reflectors that come with the T5 lights. To do this, simply remove the bulb and carefully peel back the shroud. Once removed, replace the bulb. You will now begin hanging the lights from the underside of each wire shelf using the included cable ties. There will be eight T5 lights per shelf. In order to get sufficient coverage over the entire flood table, lights will be mounted in sets of two lights long by four lights deep. The lights will be spaced approximately six inches apart in order to evenly cover the width of the flood table. When you start hanging your lights, begin by orienting the first light such that the power cord can be located on the side that is most convenient for your situation. From here, the lights will be daisy chained together. This enables you to use only one power cord per shelf. As you continue to hang the lights, ensure that they are in the proper configuration. If you look at both ends of the light fixtures, you will notice that each end has a slightly different shaped receptacle. The link cord that is included has one of each style plug, so make sure that you are staggering the lights appropriately. When all the lights are properly mounted and you've tested to make sure that they all turn on, go through and trim off the excess cable ties. After you've got your lights mounted in place, you can now position the flood tables. You will want the high end of the top flood table to be on the same side of the rack as your reservoir. You can determine which is the high end by locating the depression on one end of the table. From here, you will want to make sure the flood table below the top flood table is staggered so that the low side of the upper flood table drains into the high side of the flood table below it. Then the low side of the bottom table will be directly above the reservoir, enabling the whole system to drain back into the reservoir once the cycle is complete. Now that you've positioned the flood tables correctly, you are ready to begin installing the plumbing components to complete the system. You will begin by using the one and a quarter inch hole saw and drilling a single hole in the center of the top flood table on the high side, which again should be directly above the reservoir. Install one of the half inch grow flow elbows into this hole and make sure that the barbed portion of the elbow is pointing down towards the reservoir. The grow flow elbows come pre-assembled with a screen fitting attached. You will want to remove the screens from each of these fittings before installing them into your flood tables. This can be done by simply twisting and pulling the screen straight out. Pliers may be helpful if the screen seems difficult to remove by hand. Now, move down to the other end of the top flood table. In this end, you will use the same one and a quarter inch hole saw to drill two holes in this end of the flood table. It works best if the holes are placed near each corner of the flood table as shown here. Once the holes are drilled, install two more half inch grow flow elbows and make sure the barbed portion is pointing down to the table below and the screens are removed. 
Now you can take the 3 quarter inch elbows and place one of the short sections of 3 quarter inch vinyl tubing over one side of the elbow. The 3 quarter inch vinyl will then insert into the grow flow elbow you just installed where the screen fitting came out of. The other end of the elbow should be sitting just above the bottom of the flood table. Complete this step for the other side as well. Next, you will take a section of the half inch vinyl and insert the small half inch barbed elbow into one end. Place the other end over the barbed end of the grow flow elbow above. This section of vinyl should be long enough to allow the small half inch elbow to rest just inside the flood table directly below. Complete this step for both sides. Now that that table is complete, you will go through the same steps for the table below. You will be drilling holes and installing the same fittings directly above the reservoir. Again, this should be the low side of the table. Make sure that the sections of tubing are long enough to allow the elbows to rest comfortably inside the reservoir to avoid them popping out and getting water everywhere. This will complete the closed loop, allowing the water to drain through both tables and back into the reservoir. The final step is to place your pump in the reservoir and connect a section of half inch vinyl tubing using the appropriate size fitting from the pump to the top grow flow elbow. This is where the top flood table will fill from. Now your seedling rack is ready to use. As always, let us know if you have any questions. We're happy to help. All right, so that's, the, uh, that's our new seedling cart. Um, if you're interested in this unit, you can check out uh, shop.brightagrotech.com. We'll have uh, all the kits there uh, available for purchase. Um, and then if you've got any questions as you're getting things set up, feel free to always give us a call or shoot us an email, and uh, we'll be happy to help.